Okay, we are live. I think we're live. I think we're live. Right. Who hates student loans? Obviously, everybody. Um, so I'm super excited because we're going to talk about it today. Um, hey, 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 it's me, Tiffany, the budgetista, your favorite financial educator with another favorite financial educator, my friend, Kara. I have learned, no, Kara, how long have I known you for? I think like since I reached out to you, I think in 2012. That's crazy. So I've known Kara for a long time, a strong time in a long time. Um, so I'm excited today because today we are going to talk about five ways to accelerate that your budget can accelerate your student loan payments because who likes student loans? Not me. Um, so I asked Kara to come on board today to talk to y'all about what you can do to um, accelerate paying down your student loans because student loans are no fun. So I'm just gonna honestly blacken my screen. I'm gonna turn it on over to Kara because this is what she does. Um, then we're gonna come back and take some questions after. Are you ready? Are you set? Can you guys hear me? Um, good. I know we had a little technical difficulty in the beginning, but we're here now. So if you're ready, if you're set, let's go. Oh, make sure, make sure, make sure. Click that share button. Share it with your mom and your cousin on your Facebook page. Um, on your, yeah, just share. So that way, the more people, I really believe that giving activates abundance. And so as you're learning, I think it just helps that other people that you know, care about, love and network with, learn alongside. So click that share button and um, all right. Oh, I didn't even read. Oh, it's been so crazy today. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you real quick about Kara. She is the founder and award-winning financial wellness of, of an, an award-winning financial wellness company called the Frugal Feminista, okay? Her sound yet relatable financial advice has been featured in, okay, Essence Magazine, get into it. Black Enterprise, get into it. Women's Day, okay, Yahoo Finance, okay, Business Insider, okay, Huffington Post, okay, Washington Post, okay, okay, okay. And she is a regular money and career contributor for Essence and the author of three financial self-care books, Heal Your Relationship with Money, The Happy Finances Challenge, and Unmasking the Strong Black Woman. She also created 60 Days to Slay Sally May, the only student loan, repay student loan repayment course designated specifically for women of color, which is amazing. So like I said, today, you guys are going to learn um, how to create a slave-based budget to accelerate your student loans, how to draft a money map to accelerate your student loans, to incorporate the 2B strategy to create lump sum payments for long term. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm excited to hand you over to Kara. Kara, take it away. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to meet myself and, and black in my screen. I'll be back for questions at the end. Yeah, you guys. So I'm super excited to be here. It's been um, really great. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Let me just share my screen. Make sure you can see. I'm going to share my screen. Make sure you can see it. And I'm going to pull up right here. All right. So you guys can hopefully see it. Just let me know if they can see it. Can you see it? Make sure we're all good. Um, so I just want to say that student loans are these things that um, take so much out of our joy, take so much, take so much out of our joy and so much out of our life. And I want to be able to help women that look like me and look like you really get a hold of them. And so I want to create this course or this small teaching today about five ways to finesse your budget to accelerate your student loan payments. And um, one of the things that Tiffany already said about me is a little bit about my history um, in terms of being featured on featured on student, um, featured on Black Enterprise, all those places, um, Essence, and wherever else that you could probably find anything around personal finance. I've been a part of it and part of the conversation specifically about helping women that look like me and look like you be able to really take control of their student loans. And for tonight, I um, just wanted to really focus on some strategies for you guys along the way um, to make sure that we can actually make that actually possible. So. In thinking about our student loans and thinking about how we're going to 
look at it in a totality. I know that you're feeling that student loans won't let you be great. And some of the reasons it won't let you be great, you may be thinking are because it won't allow you to travel. It won't allow you to do other things like start a business. Um, it won't allow you to possibly buy a home or it just won't allow you to feel super duper free and super duper light. And I think that a part of this conversation has to be um, validated, that those feelings are very valid for women that look like us because we are, for many of us that are on this call, that are women of color, in particular Black women, we are the face, are the hidden face of the student loan crisis. And what that means is in statistics, here's what it means. It means that we pay 64% more than our white male counterparts when it comes to student loan payments. And so in a 2019 report called Deeper in Debt, Women and Student Loans, um, published by the American Association of University Women, found that Black women amass an average of student loan debt of $30,366 by college graduation compared to their white female counterpart of 21K and their white male counterpart of 19K. So we are just paying 60 more, 64 percent more compared to our white counterparts um, at the highest level. And I know for a lot of us, we wish we had 30K in student loan debt because a lot of us have um, more than multiple amounts of um, five figure loan debt and six figure debt. And it's important for us to stop and realize that the feelings that you're feeling are definitely legitimate feelings. Um, so the conversation then becomes now that I know that at least my feelings are validated and the data actually validates these feelings, where do we start to break up with our student loans? And we start breaking up with our student loans by really, really getting proactive about what we understand and the education around our student loans. So the first step would be to stay proactive. And when I say proactive, it means staying on top of the new, uh, the new findings or the new changes. And most recently, if you haven't known this yet, guys, in late June, th June 2020, the US Department of Education announced changes to federal loans. And here are the actual changes if you're not really um, abreast of what's going on. So what they decided to do is they decided to change the companies that will be taking over their student loan servicing. So here are the five companies that will actually be taking over the student loan servicing. You're going to have um, you're going to have Ed Financial Services. You're going to have FH Khan and Associates. You're going to have um, Maximus Federal Services. You're going to have Missouri Higher Ed, sorry, Missouri Higher Ed Associations. Um, and you're going to have the Missouri, I said you said that, and you're also going to have, my stuff is all, yeah. Um, you're also going to have the Texas Guaranteed Student Loan Corporation. So those are the five that are coming in right now. All right. And the ones that are leaving are these four. These four are the ones that are going out right now. So you have, if these are yours and you've been with them for a while, um, Great Lakes, Navian, um, Fed Loan Servicing, or Nelnet, these are the ones that are gonna be leaving um, as of December if the, they don't have an extended contract with the State Department. And so what you're gonna do in order to stay on top of this and take control and stay proactive is you're gonna make copies and save all of your documentation now. So if you have like log in, you know, make files, hard copies and stuff for your cloud and make sure because when it comes to migration and companies taking over, um, there's gonna be massive data migration happening and then someone is going to lose their information. And since we're the majority of people taking out student loans, someone who's brown and female is bound to be affected, you guys. So make sure that you've pulled all that information, you're making copies of it, you're documenting everything, people, dates, times, so you know that all payments that are up to date or are on top or above board are fully paid, that you have a paper trail because when this migration happens, there's going to be some mess that's going to follow it. So you want to make sure that you've protected yourself. And 
on top of that, in terms of being able to stay on top and kind of get together when it comes to your student loans, you need to know the number of loans that you have, the types of loans that you have, and your credit score. And your credit score is going to be super important down the line when, if you decide that refinancing, which is where a company buys your debt at a lower interest rate in exchange for their debt, and you're able to pay less on the life and on the, the quantity or balance of your loan because your credit, your credit score has made you part of a better credit risk. Um, so you have lower interest rates. So make sure if anything that part of the larger strategy is making sure that you're on top of it, that you know the basics when it comes to your, um, your, your student loans and that you're always being one step ahead of the US um, State Department, um, Education Department, because what ends up happening is that if we have this current administration and they're very much into privatization, you're gonna find that they'll be chipping away at forgiveness programs, chipping away at opportunities for you to have refinancing or co consolidation even at the federal loan level. Um, so we mo at one time we had a great distinction between private loans and, and federal loans, but depending on where we go um, moving forward, um, you're going to find that you're going to have to be very, very um, vigilant about how you take care of your paperwork, number one. And number two, often too, with the candidates that were part of the whole policy process, the ones that had the most robust and the most progressive policies around student loans, are no longer actually candidates. So we're definitely having to take um, a lot more responsibility and a lot more agency when it comes to these loans. Now, the second part of this is helping you really understand now that we are educated and we have all of our ducks in a row and maybe all our paperwork and see what we're eligible for is now we have to find the money or we have to be able to finesse our budget when it comes to our student loans. And when it comes to finessing your budget. We're going to talk about that in a totality of ways. So there's only four real ways that you can actually earn extra money. Extra money comes from saving. It comes from earning more. The third way is by doing both at the same time. And the fourth way is by doing both aggressively, right? So when it comes to finding money for your student loans, here are your four options. Now, what I do think what we tend to think about when it comes to student loans is how we can probably save more. That might be our first step. Like, let me look a look. Let me take a look at what I have. Let me take a look at what comes in in terms of income and where can I save around that, which is a great strategy. So we're going to start there. So when you think about saving to accelerate your student loans, here's how you begin to look at it. You're going to look for the magic numbers in your budget. And that means you're going to calculate your student loan interest on a monthly basis. Um, and after you do that, you're going to add that as a separate line item in your budget. Why? Because one of the things that COVID showed us and the federal government deciding to postpone or suspend interest rates is that when you look at your payments or most of your payments were going toward interest, not even the principal. And oftentimes we do it we pay our loans, our pay, and we pay it back, and we don't even really stop and think about how much of this is actually going towards the principal and how much is actually going to interest. So when you break those two apart, you begin to really see and have a great deeper understanding of your student loans because you know that you need X amount of money just to get to the principal after you paid off the interest. And then in understanding that number, you're able to make savings goals make sense or reduction or elimination of certain categories in your budget makes sense. Because sometimes we have no idea how we're gonna pay and we have no North Star or no money map, but this is the beginning of a money map when you have this magic number. So you want to add that separate item to separate the principal from the budget. And then I want you to compare, I want you to compare how much of your student loan payment is going to the interest as of September, 30th versus the principal because after September 30th, I think your next payment will be October 15th, your, your interest is going to come back. So any money that you have been able to add on, congratulations because that's an extra smart move during this time. Um, but moving forward, you're definitely going to have to know because they're coming back with a vengeance with these interest rates and everything is going to return to the way it was. So now that you, now that you know that, make sure that you know what's your interest, the minimum interest, 
what is the principal? And we're going to start thinking about where in my budget can I find money to attack each of those? So it's a comprehensive, thoughtful plan. So when you think about that, think about the numbers of your budget. I think Tiffany talks about a noodle budget. I'm thinking that one of the closest noodle budgets that many of us have gotten into collectively has been the COVID-19 budget because there are so many areas in our budgets that have been blessed in certain ways because we can't leave our house, we can't leave our homes. So thinking about the line items in your COVID-19 budget that have been bulked up or no longer in use or not exhausted as much because we're at home or now we're moving to a completely work from home structure. I know Twitter says all their employees can work from home. Um, they're gonna be some teachers um, that will have some type of hybrid structure where they're working from home some days and working in school on others or a completely remote structure. Whatever your field is or whatever your structure is in, in, at work and if there's an opportunity that has allowed you to free up money in that way, that is money that is going to now go straight towards the interest and straight towards the principal that you might not have thought of before because we were living in pre-COVID times. So your pre-COVID budget is going to probably help you accelerate your student loan payments if you use it thoughtfully and methodically. So there's gym memberships, there are nails that you may not be doing as much, there's makeup, there's insurance, there's clothes shopping, there's transportation, there's childcare, there's subscriptions to magazines or subscriptions to um, um, other like sip and, um, sip and, sip and paints. Um, there's hair, there's so many things. So I want you guys to begin to think about how many of these line items can now go directly towards your principal that you might have not been thinking about before, number one, and how much is that number actually? right? Because once you have that, you'll be in a better place to make bigger chunks and bigger payments towards your student loan debt that you might not have thought you could and still enjoy life and still in and still be able to not feel so deprived or feel resentful about your student loans or feel like you're still behind. And the other thing you want to talk about is even when you do this, even when you've save as much as you could. You've gone through all of the budgets, you've done a, a pre-COVID, a post-COVID analysis and found your magic numbers. You may find that you still come up short in a couple hundred dollars um, for your student loans every month. And a lot of times when that makes us feel, um, we feel a lot of regret over having taken out these loans or gotten these degrees. And we may face a lot of resentment because it feels like the walls are closing in on us when we apply probably strictly a savings approach to eliminating student loan debt. And now I want us to talk about a different way to think about finding and finessing our budget. So let me give you this fact here. Over the past 20 years, the number of women-owned businesses have grown 114% compared to the overall national growth rate of 44% of all for all businesses. And there's even a statistic that says that Black women ourselves have been like the, the, leading, um, the leading entrepreneurial demographic throughout all of this. And that's where I want to bring our conversation to finessing our budget for us to look at how can earning more be the best way to finesse our budget? Because the idea of eliminating debt through savings can only get us so far. And I think this conversation has to merge the trends that are happening in many of our, in many of our communities is that there's a growing desire to go out on our own and there's a growing um, number of women of color that have student loan debt. So how, rather than those seem as separate entities, how can we merge the two? And so I think that the conversation now has to go towards entrepreneurship for a purpose. Now we have mission-driven um, entrepreneurship. We have um, entrepreneurship just like profit-based, completely profit-based. And I think they all have their place. And I think a third way to look at having a side business or even a full-time business for the long haul is that when you build wealth, 
when you build something that through sales, um, through whether it be a product or a service, you'll be able not only to eliminate debt, but you'll be able to generate wealth. And for many of us, that has been the sweet spot or what's been also missing from our conversations. So I wanna talk uh, tonight about one of the Bs that I had mentioned was the idea of building a business, whether it be part-time or after you decide what works for you, maybe this can be your full-time as part of your student loan payment strategy. And a lot of us don't think about the two going together, but they very much go together. And I can even use um, myself as part of that whole discussion. Because when I started the Frugal Feminista, and part of my story is that I eliminated 65K of student loan debt, 40 of which I did in um, two years, my story came a lot from saving. It came a lot from increasing my income. It never came really until I started to figure it out. It never started to come from building the Frugal Feminista. And so I wanted to just to share the milestones about what 5K debt could look like in a course of eight years versus the 25 or 30 year loan terms that many of us marry ourselves to in terms of student loans. And so the, start, the Frugal Feminista started in 2012, and it started with $100 and a website, just a basic blog website. And over that time, um, I was able, I rebranded after um, I, I got in, I wanted to kind of move toward talking more about feminism as well. And moving from there, after three years, I was able to consistently bring in five figures a year. And this is still while I had a job. Right. So imagine if you have a student loan debt of sixty thousand dollars and if you're doing your job and you're doing something digitally online, which doesn't cost you much overhead. Imagine if you could bring in an extra twelve thousand or extra twenty thousand dollars a year just strictly for your student loans. That means that your regular income can go towards the other things that you want to do and you're still doing something that you enjoy and you're accelerating your student loan payments. Right? So I want you guys to begin to think about the idea of student loans being your new normal, being that 25 to 30 year um, part of mortgage like um, relationship doesn't have to be when you think about having a digital service or a digital product, which everyone is going to be a part of now because we're all working from home. It's a perfect time to pivot towards that if you're thinking about it, to being able to use your own interests, your own um, your own likes and, and your own know-how and knowledge to be able to generate five figures in the beginning every year. And five figures means four figures every month. And that means um, a couple hundred dollars, you know, every week, every, um, every couple of weeks, right? So think about it that way as a part of your student loan strategy. And then now in 2020, I have some, I have five figure months, sometimes five figure days, um, just from doing the same thing that I do, talking about personal finance, talking about relationships with money, talking about the things that I love to do from the, the comfort of my home. Tiffany just had, I think, um, a conversation of having gone from 300,000 K in debt to 10 million. And I think that was in 10 years. So imagine 10 years, 10 million um, for doing something that she loves. Imagine 50, you know, 50K um, months or 50K contracts are possible, even at the part-time level, if you begin to think about what your student loan payments are and the relationship between your student loan payments and the revenue, and that your revenue has to at least exceed your student loan payment. So once you begin to merge those two, you begin to see the possibilities of finessing your budget in a way that allows you really to accelerate these loans and not feel salty and not feel resentful that you can't live your best life. And I wanted to bring that up to you guys because I think we have all these various parts of our money garden all over the place instead of realizing the totality of it all. Yes, I can have a business and be in student loan debt because my business is going to get me out of student loan debt without me having to eat, you know, ham sandwiches every day, you know? So wanting to put that out there for you.
And it's important for you to think about this um, because we all have that part of us in us that has a sweet spot. So maybe you have products, maybe you have services, maybe you're really good at something. Um, what, like, what is it that you can do? Um, have you seen someone else do it? Um, if it's not a passion, do you see yourself doing something else that could actually generate a lot of money for a certain amount of time? That that business doesn't have to be your only business. It could be the first one just strictly for your loans and it just has to get you your principal plus your interest every month. I mean, that is a magic number as a revenue goal for you to be able not to have to suck salt forever. And I think that once we combine all the trends that are happening in our society and black women or women of color, whoever else is on this line are getting more savvy and hip to creating their own communities. We're thriving on community. We need community. You're going to see that there's gonna be a high demand for services and products that are solving problems that are happening now. And there are a ton of problems that are happening now. And there are tons of people that have money to do so. And I think that part of this conversation too is the idea of having, whether it be low end ticket or high end ticket items, both work. You know, Think about your student loan debt and think about which would make the most sense for you. Would having a $2,500 um, product work and actually have the quality and things around it to make it be worth it? Or would something be small that's easier to get lots of people behind be the best way to do it? There's no real, wrong way. Real, real quick, Kara, because I see yeah. some people, you might have jumped on. So I see some of the, I'm reading some of the comments. Oh. What what Kara is sharing, because some people are like, wait, I don't get it. I thought we were still talking about student loans. She's yeah. sharing some ways to expedite student loan pay down. So ways that you can make extra income that are can be relatively a low or a heavy lift or however big that lift is. So you can then put that money toward expediting. Because remember, today's class is about how do you expedite student loan pay down? So Kara sharing. So for those of you who might have joined later or whatever, you're like, why we're talking about entrepreneurship. It's just Kara sharing a real viable way to expedite paying down your student loan. Like one of our friends, Sandy, we had, right? right. Didn't Sandy pay off like $80,000 worth of student loan debt in like a year and a half? Amazon. Right. You know, so yeah. I'm just like, I just want to jump on because of Kara. I know you can't see well, the question, so I just wanted to. No, okay. quick. no, because I think what we do is they want, like we want this kind of magic thing, right? The, the magic to student loans, you can go to me if you don't want to be like, yeah. but the magic to it all is the idea of finding more ways to make money that doesn't make you feel like you can't do the other things that you want to do. And we're trying to break down the idea of student loans not being related to making more money. Because the, the, the truth of it all is that all the things that we have, whether it be the income-based repayment plans, um, the income-driven repayment plans, um, income contingent, all those are there to extend the life of the loan and extend the interest that's being paid. So if you're currently paying your um, income-driven payment plan and you know that you're paying very little, at the on the at the odds offset, it looks like it may be a good thing because you're only paying, you're probably even not even paying anything and you're just probably only paying interest of that. But if you keep that loan for 20, 30 years is what they're asking you to do, you're gonna pay two or three or four times more than the actual loan when you could truncate that by applying it a different mindset around the money. Waiting it out is not really being savvy in the sense of paying less. You're paying more to hold the loan, even if it seems like it's only being taken out little by little. Now, if that's something that you can afford, that's great. But what I'm also trying to show you is that the mindset of being able to see how can I make my student loan payments not through saving only, but through earning more. Now I can say, you know, ask for um, a salary increase. That's all viable too. But I'm also saying that because products and services allow for uh, almost a, a indefinite ceiling for your income and maybe five to 10 years of actually putting in work to see efforts, you go further in terms of growing your wealth, but also eliminating your debt by having this approach to accelerating your student loans. Okay, so I wanted to um, leave you guys with having you under, 
Yeah, um, having you understand that. So we're gonna stay right here and I wanna be able to give you guys um, some food for thought for this. Cause this is maybe like, this is not what I'm saying, but this is, this is not what you're looking for. But I think it may be something that um, helps you really see what student loans are. Student loans are a set of money that have to be repaid some of it may be forgiven and that forgiveness that forgiveness process still has so many stipulations around it and that in the process say of the 20 or 30 years that you may have decided to do an income driven repayment plan um, you may find that the money that you have put away or put towards it may have done better um, had you invested it in building something for yourself where you can have that and more so i'm gonna let, we're gonna jump back on and have some questions answered for tiffany yes no i think that that what I love is what Kara is talking about is what some people quite honestly overlook mm -hmm. that. Um, and I know I did. I was really focused on paying off debt in a more traditional sense that you go to work. So I don't know if y'all know, but most of y'all know I used to be a teacher and Kara used to be a teacher and a principal too, right, Kara? Right. Yep. Yes, yep. I am. Right. So it was like, you know, very traditional. You go to work, you make your money, you set aside some of your money to pay down your bills, go to work, make your money. Make so I, I remember like it was mm, maybe after I'd lost my job when a light bulb went on that like I didn't have, I, I lost my job in the last um, recession because my school was a nonprofit based and I didn't, I didn't have that cycle again. So I had to put my student loans, they were federal and like deferment and forbearance, like so many people. And um, I was on unemployment and I had student loans, but I also had credit card debt. So I figured I'm going to focus on my credit card debt first and literally on unemployment I continued the cycle. Like I was on unemployment. I used to babysit, tutor. I would get that money, pay a little bit of the bills that I could, and then really be aggressive with paying down my credit card debt. And that was the cycle. And it took me almost three years. I had $35,000 in credit card debt because of a scam. Don't ask. It took me almost three years and like eating nothing, like literally being like, Ugh, I eat whatever's at my parents' house. And I was living in a room and I was like, you know, because that was the cycle. So what Kara is talking about now, which is what Kara does so well is she is explaining that there's a shift to your mindset that can happen. You know, if you look at student loan debt differently. So I know it's, it, it, I know it's confusing to y'all because you haven't heard it like this before. And that's the point. We're trying to teach you a new way of thinking like, oh, so it took me years before I literally paid on my credit card debt. And then I was going to go attack my student loan debt, same system, sacrifice, 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 less, 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 less. But what made me stop is my credit card debt took me three years to $35,000 to get rid of. But Kara, I had, my student loan debt was $52,000. And I remember thinking I had three years where I had to live in a room, mm -hmm. eat like noodles and blah, blah. And I was like, oh my God, I don't want to do another. <laughs> I don't want to do another three years, you know? That's what I told myself. And I was just like, I wasn't looking forward to it. Cause I figured if it took me three years for 35, maybe it's going to take me five for 50. And by then I was like 31, 32. So I was like, uh, I don't want to be like 30, you know, 35, 36, 37, just like working just to pay off debt. And then the light bulb came on that said, could I instead invest in myself, in my knowledge and to learn how to earn? So that's what Kara is really leaning into that. She's not talking about student loan debt in the traditional sense and sacrifice, 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 then paid off, paid off, paid off. You can certainly do that as well. But, and I, I've seen some of you guys say, well, oh, you know, every, there's only enough time, and only so much time in the day and there's so many businesses out there. And, and, and some of these things are true, but some of these things are limiting thoughts and beliefs. I, um, I don't know, Carrie, you want to take this, take, um, so they can see yeah, us talk. Yeah, I can't see. Yeah. And I think, um, so I, I appreciate that, Tiffany, because I can give you like, so like I said, the government, like we sometimes think they're going to be, the government is going to, um, we're looking for it to be canceled, more than likely it's not gonna be canceled. And it'll be a while before it gets canceled. And within that time, the interest rate is still gonna rack up on your, on your loans. What I'm trying to get to you guys is that the, the shift in the mindset, I can think of a number in my head, make a product around it, promote that product and decide that I would be able to generate that amount of money because of the value that I'm creating in that product. So I know that within that price, I'll be able to eliminate my student loans. And so I want, it's the idea of thinking beyond the debt and thinking towards the wealth. Yeah, oh yes. 
will be eliminated automatically. And so then y'all not really ready for the other thing I was going to talk about, about buying homes with the 3% loan. Cause I know you had Kendra on. Yes. It's about property ownership of rentals. You can have other people paying your student loans mm -hmm. because you will be able to have a valuation. You will be able to own more without putting all of your money down. So now, if can you take off the screen share? So that way they can, uh, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, so that's that's what Kara is talking about. I it's that shift. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, I got you. Yes, yeah, she's talking about that shift. I wanna take some of you guys' questions, but she's yeah. talking about that shift to look at, because what happens is people look at debt freedom as the goal. Right. And what Kara is saying that debt freedom is a goal on the way to wealth. So let's just say you're on the way to wealth, and this is a sign, and this is a milestone, and this is the, this is debt, right? You're on the way to wealth. This is you. I'm on my way to wealth. Matter of fact, even better. Mm -hmm. They gave me this little unicorn. You know, <laughs> everybody knows I call my, my uh, team the unicorn squad. This is you, Dreamcatcher unicorn. On the way to wealth, on my way to wealth. Oh, debt freedom. That's cute. You knock out that that point, <laughs> right? And they can tell we used to be teachers, right, Kara? Right. So then you knock out that <laughs> boss. Right. I'm here with you. Let me get it. Right. Look, look, I got my daughter's dog. Yeah. You know what? You knock right. out that milestone. Right. But some people act as if this milestone is yay. Boom, knocked it out. And they're like, oh, I'm debt free. But you know who else is debt free? Because Kara, how old is your daughter? She's four. She's four. What's your daughter's name? Senna. So does Senna have a mortgage? Nope. Does Senna have a car note? She does not. Does Santa have student loan debt? No, she doesn't. So Santa is debt free. And yet, I bet you Santa broke because she's full. Okay, right. Right? <laughs> Eating up all your food, drinking all your juice. So right. if your goal is just to get debt free, oh, I want to get rid of my student loan debt, which is a good. Yes. Getting rid of student loan debt is a, is a good thing. But then you are debt free. But you and Santa neck and neck like, hey, girl, me and you are debt free. That, that don't mean nothing. So what Kara is saying is that she wants you to reframe your thoughts about student loan debt, that this is a goal on the way to the goal, which is debt freedom. Not debt freedom, which is wealth, right? right? So you knock out debt freedom on your way to achieving wealth. So debt freedom can come along with you on the ride to achieving right. wealth. Because think about it. the reason that you feel a lot of resentment and a lot of regret is because you don't have the money to do all the things that you want to do in life comfortably. Right. So Tiffany had to go eat at grandma's or mom's house. She mm -hmm. had to just sacrifice, take away, take away, deprive, deprive, deprive. Mm -hmm. When you look at that number, when it's five figures and six figures, you feel helpless because it seems so great because you have to take your one salary, break it up into different parts, your retirement, your credit card debt, a little bit of fun, maybe something for your children, maybe a car repayment plan. I mean, to repair the repair the car. And then you're never able really to get ahead of it because the loan is so large and because of the interest. And so I already shared with you ways to save your way towards it. But if you find that you're falling short, one of the ways to address that is to earn more through yeah. a business that can say you want the business only to take out the interest rate. You know what I mean? Or you want to do something like affiliates or side hustles or something, but you're going to have to earn more. And when I say finessing your budget is expanding your budget, which help by helping you see that money is, is, is a concept mm -hmm. that you create. Like I make up prices. Tiffany can make up a price. Like mm -hmm. I can get paid a certain amount of money over time, but look at it. I'm making say five figures a contract after, after 2012 to 2020, eight years. Mm -hmm. Now our, our terms of our budget, the terms of our loans are 20 and 25 years, which we gladly get into because we are thinking that it's going to somehow go away. But that short amount of time, you'll be able to produce more to get out of that debt when yes. you got it that way because when i did when i invested in my business then one day i was literally able to write myself a single check to get out of that student loan debt when i stopped making my focus being debt free and started making my focus wealth so i just want you guys i'm gonna i want you to ask your questions in the um in the comments yeah. because i'm seeing a lot of i can't not me i can't not me you know what that is that's mindset and i brought Kara here because oftentimes i bring bring folks here that are like, okay, like we had um, Kendra that talked you, talk you guys about house hacking, Nativa that comes and teaches you like credit, all things credit, Tila stocks and, you know, and those things are great. But there is one thing that you cannot do that you, 
it, you must do in order to make those other things succeed is you have to manage your mindset. When I tell you, so I used to like back in the day, if y'all old school dreamcast, you remember this. So you know us folks that before you cook meat, Kara, what's the, what's the first, what are some of the things that you do before you cook meat? So you yes. take, what'd you say? Isn't it? Exactly. You have to see, now, some people don't season their meat, but we season <laughs> our meat, right? So after you clean that meat, you season the meat, which means you prepare it to be cooked, to be consumed. And so what Kara specializes in better than anyone that I know is that she is the queen of helping you learn how to season your meat. Mean your meat meaning your brain. So that's what I'm when I'm saying season your meat, that's what I'm meaning that Kara has a way of helping you like switch your mindset. We have, so for the all that don't know, we have an online school called the Literature Academy. And Kara has a course um, about mindset. It is our number one most popular course inside the Literature Academy because Kara has a way of unlocking your mindset to see things differently. I remember the first time that Kara and I taped the course together, I cried because I was so moved and I didn't realize that how many money stories I had that were holding me back, how much fear. I mean, like we're taping the course live, how we're taping now. Right. I cried, we had to retape it without right. me because it was so moving because Kara has a way of having you one, look at where you are, seeing yourself, um, celebrating the awareness because we're not here to make ourselves feel bad, but also helping to gently shift that behavior. When I tell you, like, I used to be a preschool teacher and now I run an eight figure a year company. How do you do that? How? How do you go from preschool teacher to eight figure year company? It starts right here. It's your mind. You have to season your meat. And so I asked Kara to come today because I wanted you guys to have some access to, because even some of the things she was saying today were making you feel a little uncomfortable. Everyone's like, well, what does what does starting a business and making more money have to do with student loans? Mm, she's shifting what you know to something new so you can approach your life and your finances differently. So Kara actually has, so you know, I always ask the people who come here if they have something for us. And she has something called the five day slay your student loan challenge. And you know, I love me a good challenge. And it is a different way to shift your mindset so you can begin to look at your student loans and your debt in general and your finances in general differently. You know, because if you're wanting to go from, you can't go from preschool teacher making, this is what I was making, $39,000 a year to eight figure year business owner without shifting. And not what happens with shifts is that it's not, it wasn't one shift. It was like a shift and then a shift. And, then, and if I'm going to go from eight figures a, a year to nine figures a year, or if I'm going to, when I went from, you know, making my first, you know, um, hundred dollars to, to, to 5,000 to 1500, or when I went from, you know, paying off my student loan debt and paying off my credit card debt. Those were all mindset shifts. So I asked Kara, I'm like, literally, I don't know a mindset person better than Kara. So I asked her if she could come on and share something with us. So like I said, she teaches this a mindset class inside the Literature Academy. And Kara actually has a full course that she teaches. You know, how, how long is your full course, Kara? The full course, the, the it's um, 60 days. It's 60 like a, days. yeah. Right. So I told her, I asked her, I said, can she come and do something specifically for Dreamcatcher? She has not done this. Have you done this with anybody else before I start to lie? Mm -mm. Not that I was going to say, not that I know of. So mm -hmm. she's got this 60 day full mindset course called that she has condensed for us into a five day Slay Your Student Loan Challenge where you get five days of emails and links to videos, live Q&A, homework assignments. Like I said, Kara's an educator like me, which I love. She's a teacher and a principal. You get to learn how to eliminate debt fix your credit, um, find more money in your budget, calculate your student, um, calculate your new student loan normal, develop a, a Sally Mae Slayer mindset. That mindset piece is so critical. This is not a course where it's like um, a traditional course where it's like, hey, here's where you fill out this paperwork. To da -da -da. No, 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 no. This is a course that is transformational inside where you think differently, so you move differently, so you get to live differently. Like I said, Kara has a 60-day course, because I was looking to see, like, has she done this before? But Dreamcatcher, stay getting special. So her 60-day course is, what is it, like $700? Yeah. So I asked specifically, is there something that you can create just for Dreamcatchers? Because especially now, I cannot over-explain 
especially now, a mindset shift is critical if you are to survive what's happening now. Because we have pandemic, we have quarantine, we also have a stock market and an economy that are not in sync. The stock market is going up, 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 while the economy is going down, down, down. That is a, that is a recipe for disaster, where things look good on the outside, but on the inside, they're not. So we are in very um, precarious times. And the last recession caught me off guard because I lost everything. I lost my house. I lost my con my, my, my retirement fund. I lost my relationship. I moved back home. I was 30. I lost everything. And I said, I the next time a recession hits, because recessions come about every 10 to 15 years, I said, it, it ain't going to catch me like that. So I had to shift my mindset. I don't care how much budgeting you do, how much debt you do, how much credit you do. I don't care about any of those things. If you don't shift your mindset, you will be right back. You ever seen somebody, you, you hear people win the lottery and a year later, they have tricked up a million, 10 million, 20 million out because I don't, it doesn't matter how much money you make. So like I said, I asked Carol, who to me is the best in the business of mindset shift. And so I was like, I'm not gonna like her. We don't got no 60 days or 90 days. I, Cause I knew it was longer. So she created this five day Slay Your Student Loan Challenge. So $700 for her longer course. And she condensed it for dream catchers only. Like this is specifically for us to $97. And if you are someone who you're like, I do need a mindset shift. I want to go from here to here. I have learned, because I'm a cheapo, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Man, I don't like spending any money. But even me, I just recently got a business coach because I had been stuck at a mindset that was keeping me here. And if I tell you how much I paid for my business coach, two months for business coaching, him and his team coached me and my team, $70,000. Normally, old school tends to be like, uh, you can keep it. But what <laughs> I've learned is that I have learned that to invest in myself is to transform my life. And so I have learned that when it is worth it, because all coaching ain't worth it, when it is worth it, it, worth it, it can transform your life. And now we are talking about and making plans for my business in the next five years to have a billion dollar valuation. Mm. So that investment of $70,000 to work toward creating a, now, when you have a billion dollar valuation, it means that, that your company's making $100 million a year, right? We're not at $100 million a year, but that's what we're working on now because now my mindset is like cracked wide open. How do you go from preschool teacher to talking about one day having a billion dollar business and having a plan in place to do that? You do so by investing in knowledge, coaching from the right person is critically important. That's why I asked Kara to come. Like I said, there's nobody, I mean, my mindset stuff pales in comparison to Kara's. She shifted mine. Like I said, the, the last thing that we did together, I was literally crying. I was like, all right, we're gonna have to retake this class because Dreamcast don't need to see me boohooing as you shift my mindset. So if it's something that you're interested in and you're like, and I'm gonna take your questions about, for Kara about mindset, but I just, I, I cannot over explain enough how important that shift in mindset it is. You cannot transform your life without transforming your mind. The, the five day to slay your student loan challenge is not just a, it, it's a mindset challenge that's going to shift your consciousness about looking at that differently, moving differently. And the link, oh, I forgot because I know some of you guys are asking. If you can post it in the, the link is in the description of this video. If you go to the video, it should be like at the bottom somewhere. Um, and, and if you guys can post, I'm going to post it in the, um, in the comments too. So like I said, this is just for us dream catchers that Kara created. She condensed her 60 days, you said 60 day, right, Kara? It's, it's called, it's four modules and you do it over 60 days. And yeah, so she, it's- She, she like, condensed it for us. I just want to make, so they understand that Kara took this condensed 60 day course and she put it into a five day course for us. And it's seven, $700, mm -hmm. um, $97, which I think is incredible. So yeah. I'm sorry, Kara. Now I know that was long winded, but I'm like, the people got to know who you are. Cause I'm just uh, like- uh, it's so, it, Tiffany is so good because I think that's the problem. We've been so happy with just, making do with less, like making a dollar out of 15 cents. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, that doesn't happen. That's not really real. And why not just have $2? Do you know what I mean? Like, why do you have to struggle so much mm -hmm. in terms of understanding how money moves and wealth moves? We're just happy not being in debt instead of moving forward or taking care of the other parts of student loan, our other parts of our financial garden, like our retirement, like getting, like the the the, the five day course I actually send you 10 emails, one in the morning, one in the afternoon to help you really un go deeply into these various concepts, which range from the mindset, but also go into like the tactical things. Like when you think about student loans, you gotta think about it in relation to all of your finances. And sometimes we're just 
just so busy separating all these things that we don't get anywhere and we get very mm -hmm. frustrated. And that's why we get so resentful about having student loans because we haven't thought about what will be a solution. It's not student loan debt. It's the ability to generate money at the rate that we want it. Yeah. Um, and the idea of pricing, the idea of being in control of money, that we're not the ones just paying someone, that we're the ones that, that are creating the numbers in our heads, offering something for it and then being able to receive. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the five day um, Slay Student Loan Challenge helps you really think about the totality of your finances and your student loans being a part of that. Because sometimes black people in general, like this is not like a stereotype, but statistically we're paying, we're paying our kids student loans by taking out of our retirement mm -hmm. because we don't know how to move with money, like money, make money move for us um, or make sure that we are putting away for retirement. So we don't have to touch that for, for student loan money and realize that the two aren't the same. And yes. so I think that when we start looking it's just an experience like and, and I myself like coming from a background of like single mom, two kids, lots of scarcity. Like I have to train my mind. Like when someone gives me 20 K to write an article, I'm like, why they give me this money? Like, oh, because I deserve it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, because I asked for it and it's OK. So helping you see that your student loan timeline can be one that you create, not what someone yes. else. Yes. Oh, can I tell you when I tell you that mindset, like there is more abundance out there than you that you even understand. Like I literally have a friend who was helping me out um, by like doing like a, she was helping me, I'm gonna keep it vague. Cause she's like, don't tell my business, but whatever. She was helping me out in the business because I hired someone they weren't doing what they're supposed to do. So I said, well, can you just, girl, you really organized. Can you write some things for me and help me out and okay. do, do what I hired this person to do? And she was like, sure. So she did such a good job. I was like, you know what? Let's make a little space in the company for you. Okay. And we were paying her like maybe like 1500 bucks a month, which is good money. It's just okay. like, oh, extra lot of money. Okay. This is cute, mm -hmm. right? Then her job where she was um, going to be working, you know, um, COVID happened. And, you know, and she was just like, oh, well, thank goodness it's 1500 that I'm making. So we gave her some more responsibilities. Then someone asked me because they noticed that a part of my business was more organized and more clean and said, how is it that way? And I said, well, I've got this new person, but that's not what she really do. She just helped me out. And they're like, well, can she help me out the way she helped you out? And I was like, okay. So then she charged them $2,000 a month to help them out. And I'm purposely being vague, like I said, because she'd be like, right. don't tell my business. Right. Um, right? And so she got so good with having that friend out that that friend told another friend, it was like, this girl's helping me out in this way. She's amazing. And they're like, well, could she help me out? That? She now, Kara, she has five clients paying her $2,000 a month. Right. She went from, what am I going to do during COVID to in two months, she's making $10,000 a month. And I share that because it seems so like, hey, that can't be me, that can't be me. That's not true. She's been figuring out for a while now, like, what am I really good at? And she's super organized, super, super um, meticulous. And it translated into what she's doing now. And she's like, I, I just can't believe it. She's like, I, I honestly can see that in a year, I could be making half a million dollars a year doing this from something that she wasn't formally trained to do, but because of her innate talent and skill. So I just share that because that is a mindset shift. There is, when I tell you there's so much money out there, some of the, some of these, when I tell you there's so much money, I know it doesn't feel like it because I've been there where it doesn't feel like it. There is so much money out there, but you're going to have a hard time accessing it if you don't shift your mindset. And so that's what Kara really helps with is that like student loans, it, although it seems so overwhelming, but if that's the focus, you will always feel overwhelmed. If the focus is really learning, earning, to earn and grow wealth, then, then you will see that there is abundance out there that taking care of your student loans is not going to be a big deal. That 30-year timeline, maybe three years. Then you got your mama a house. Then you get your house. I'm telling you, I'm sharing these things because that's me. I paid off my parents' mortgage. This is preschool teacher Tiffany, right? So I paid off my parents' mortgage. The house I'm living in now, mortgage free. My husband and I bought a, 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 a um, um, an investment property. Um, no mortgage on that. We both have our cars. No car note. I could not have imagined ten years ago when I was living in a room that cost me five hundred bucks a month. And that's all I could afford at thirty. I could not have imagined at forty I would be here. But it was the shifting of mindset. I remember reading an article. It was like, what is the difference between a billionaire and a millionaire when it and it was their mindset that this article had did a study of billionaires versus millionaires. And they found that billionaires 
were able to manage challenge and failures differently than millionaires. That billionaires didn't allow challenge and failures to make them feel bad and overwhelmed and that they looked at them almost with excitement. Oh, this is a new thing to learn, that I can conquer this. And so I remember telling myself, I don't know if I'll ever be a billionaire, but I wanted to learn how to approach my finances in that way or in my life in that way that when things were challenging, you know, that I could I could look at them with um, curiosity and joy. And so that's what I'm wanting for you. And that's why I brought um, Kara here, because like I said, there's nobody better in the business. I mean, I have known, I know, you know, so many people in the personal finance space. And when it comes to mindset, the way Kara just helps you to shift and look at things differently. Um, and, and also, like I said, you know, Kara has a special place because she's an educator like myself. So, you know, when you get a good teacher, it's like a, it's like hot cocoa and, 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 and chocolate chip um, chocolate chip cookies. You're like, yes, you know, like a good teacher just makes, makes all the things good. And so I just wanted to share her with you. And so I'm gonna take some questions real quick. Again, if you're interested in signing up for the five day Sally Mae Slay Challenge, remember this is not this technical, oh, you're gonna call Sally Mae, blah, blah, blah. It's a mindset shift challenge that's not gonna just help you with your, with your student loans, but also, the, it should translate into the rest of your life. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, 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 um. Let's see. I'm just looking for some questions. Um, yes. Yeah, so somebody. Oh, that's a good. Um, a good comment. Um, Tanique. Someone named Sharifa. I guess she must have made a mistake, and she said, "Accept the mistake, but don't let it consume you." Tomorrow's a new day. So let's answer that, Kara. If how if I've messed up, what are some things that I can do? To do because I think everyone's feeling like that. So I've messed up with my finances. I wanted my credit card debt. I'm not gonna lie, I got new clothes. I um I I purchased a car that I knew I probably shouldn't have gotten. All these I've done, I've done, I've done, I've done. C can you share what are some things that we can do to move past that? Right. I think the first thing is like to uh, to help you understand that it was meeting a need. Do you know what I mean? So it was signaling a need that you had to have met. And sometimes it was sadness. Sometimes it was a sense of fear, sometimes it was a sense of um, wanting or whatever it might have been. And so you don't ever feel bad for your feelings. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's the biggest thing. A lot of us do things that are driven by our feelings. And then we are ashamed of those feelings after they are exposed for the behavior. Now, what you want to do is replace the behavior. Do you know mm. what I mean? Replace the behavior, not the feeling. Like the reason we have feelings is because it signals to us that there's something, it's information. Do you know what mm. I mean? Rather than ignore the information, you'd like be curious about the information. Like, why do I maybe splurge um, on um, chocolate chip cookies when I shouldn't? We've had this conversation before, right? Yes, we did. That's my, I'm like, oh, my business. That's me. I splurge on chocolate chip cookies. I love well, that. Me too. Me too. Like me too. Um, sometimes out of frustration, like I'm really frustrated. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes I want to escape. Sometimes I want to pamper myself. Sometimes I want to feel like I can do whatever I want. And so there's no, the feeling is something that you have to own because we need those experiences to make us feel alive. The only thing we have to do is how can we begin to replace that, the, the response with something that's more positive. So I think the first thing is accept your feelings. You're going to have, and they talk this thing about toxic positivity i think there's truth to it because not everyone like your life is not going to be perfect everything's not going to go well and that your feelings of you know maybe the darker feelings so to speak are also a range and they're an important part of you so the only thing is now to think about what are some other things that i can do instead of that that won't keep me from my goal of financial empowerment so the next time you may have this urge maybe the last time you might have spent um, $200, maybe this time you'll spend a hundred and be proud of yourself because sometimes it doesn't start from I'm spending everything that I got to I'm spending nothing. That's not realistic. It's the incremental improvements that you look for to help you feel good about the progress that you're making. And I think sometimes it could just be too hard on ourselves with respect mm. to mistakes. Makes, mistakes are, are data. Mistakes mm. are information. And I think that we have this kind of image of ourselves and that image of ourselves is usually an amalgamation of all the the best the best um characteristics of all these different people that we know as opposed to looking at people holistically with their dark and their you know their great and not so great sides so we're expecting ourselves to be the best at all things all the time because we have this perfect person in our head when in fact we need to embrace that 
part of our the part of the beauty about being who we are is the ability to make mistakes and recover. So I would say that. I would say also when it comes to um, something practical is calling a girlfriend that will tell you no or walk okay. you off a cliff. Do you know what I mean? Something practical. So sometimes I'm that friend and sometimes I need that friend to say, okay, am I being too crazy about this? Can you help me kind of figure out why I may be thinking that? And then sometimes it's something as simple as, um, girl, stop. Do you know what I mean? You know, you, you know, you have your goal. And sometimes that is just enough. Or sometimes you just need to um, talk to someone about it a little bit more deeply to distract you from what it is. So you can really get in touch with, that's not what I really want. It's just a uh, a canned response, an automatic automatic response that I do often, rather than thinking about what it is that I'm trying to, what need I'm trying to meet. So mm -hmm. girlfriends can help you address that. Um, journaling can help you address that to see some of the patterns that you come up with, like thinking about actually whose voice is that that's talking to you? Because sometimes mm -hmm. it's not your voice. It's sometimes a critical voice that's your mom or your dad or your teacher or someone that's telling you that you're not good enough. So being able to identify the voice and talk back to the voice in a way from a place of, of power. And sometimes it sounds like a little woo woo, but mm -hmm. there's so many voices in our heads and stories, especially as black women. I'm not, I'm not showing everyone is a black woman here, but there's so many stories for people who are marginalized that we internalize. And so mm -hmm. part of it is really finding out whose voice is that? Is that my voice? Do you know what I mean? And when you know that's not your voice, because your true voice is one that's caring, loving, supportive, that will understand that you made a mistake, but then kind of console you and comfort you just the way you would do a child, right? Yes. To help you, give you the guidance about what you can do better next time. Not forever, not seven, not seven steps down the road, but the next time it happens. And so, I mean, that's the short answer for that. No, I love that. And I, I just want to say, I want you to answer another question and then, and then we'll wrap, honestly. Yeah. So this is, I think this is, this is something that everybody, so lean in, get your pen, get your journal, <laughs> get your fingers typing. I also believe that when you teach, you learn twice. So yeah. if you hear something, I see some of you guys are taping, posting some of what Kara's saying in the comments. I love that. Continue to do that. Yeah. Um, so somebody asked a really good question. I can't remember your name, mm -hmm. Dreamcatcher. Um, she said, I want to shift from billionaire, like a millionaire to billionaire mindset, but basically I want to level up my mindset. What are what is something that someone can do daily, like a tangible thing to shift from that lack mindset to an abundance mindset? So like, yeah, like what is something that Carol? So like whether it's thousandaire to millionaire, whether it's just like I want to have ten dollars in my pocket, like what is something that we can do, a tangible thing that we can do daily to help shift our mindset from lack to abundance? Mm. I give you a story. So for a long time, like it's random, like it's, it's an important story. For a long time, I wanted diamond earrings, right? And so, I, but in, there was a part of me that said, you can't get diamond earrings. You can't afford diamond earrings. And so what I did was I, I was walking down the street and I had passed JCPenney. And then there were, it was like a Mother's Day sale and they were like diamond earrings for $25. Now, these aren't the best diamond earrings. It was probably just a scratch of diamond earrings, but in my, it was a diamond earring, right? So I bought it. And so the idea is that you get a part of it. So you want to go to the, the best location. So you want to go to the, the a five star um, hotel and you can't afford it. Well, then you get a drink at the bar in that hotel. You know what I mean? You want to go to a house. You want to go to live in the biggest house on, a, on the biggest block. Well, how about visiting that block? So you begin to feel the vibration of that area. And I think it's this idea of it, the technicality of it is important. If you want to be part of it, it's like a win. Like either when you win, if you win by default or you win by a, a landslide, it's still a win. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think we have to understand that. So if whatever it is, like how do you begin to build that abundance? Let me give an example too. Do something that feels good every day. Something small. So what's your ideal day like? Is it that you wake up in the morning, you have music, you have a ritual where you're centering yourself? Is it that you you buy something, something small, but something that you really, really like um, and you use it every day? When you put yourself in a vibration of you've already established that you have poured into yourself, you have given yourself what you wanted and just not what you needed, mm -hmm. that's when abundance starts to happen. And I know for me, um, my day of abundance, take a day off and see what it looks like. Do you know what I mean? Like take, like call in sick or take a day off and say, what would my ideal day look like in the morning and live it out? Because a lot of us just looking out there, Tiffany, do you know what I mean? Like out there, but the, 
it's right here in, in small bits. And then after you do it one day, like, oh, I like this. Let me, I did it for the morning. Let me do it for the afternoon. What does my ideal afternoon look like? Let me, look, what does two days look like? What does a week look like? Mm. What does, say, for example, if you have a business and you start off with saying selling something for $20 and then you feel like, let me just bump it up to 40. What does that look like? Mm. And then all of a sudden you change your prices. Like I've changed my prices just because I was like, it was time. And you just add a one to the front or you double it and you're still able to add value to the person, you've been able to up level your abundance. And so I think some of us are looking for outside big, um, big ideas, but it starts with those small things and you get used to feeling that good. You get yes. used to feeling that great. And then you begin to be able to believe that it's true. I like, love that. I so my ideal, yeah activate those small in, in the beginning it's those small tweaks and, and I love that almost like play acting in the life that you're wanting I, I used to drive I um when I used to because I live in Newark and Newark has an international airport when I used to teach preschool I would drive well I don't I didn't live in Newark then and I would drive into Newark seven o'clock in the morning I had to be at work and the sky would be pink and purple and these beautiful colors and I would see planes because they were landing in Newark airport and I would see planes coming in and I would pretend that I was driving to get on a plane because that's like whatever that I didn't even know what like I was like whatever beyond teaching preschool I wanted something different and I was like whatever it is I used to I wanted I knew I wanted to speak and I said people are going to be flying me to these different places and that's where I'm going in this morning you know not that I didn't love the kids not that I didn't love teaching oh. but I'm flying to so to your point of like almost play acting in 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 that way and so now I live in Newark and obviously outside is closed right now but when I tell you the feeling of, of knowing that I was going to do just that, yes. that yeah. I'm was getting on these planes, I'm getting paid to speak and I'm like, wow. So living in that, like ha living in your head internally in those goals and dreams is so powerful. Yeah. So I love that. So, so you level up internally before you level up externally. Sorry. Yeah. And I know we have to go, but the last thing like this visualization, it's like what actually athletes do. Like mm. your body doesn't know the difference between you thinking about it and your body actually doing it. So um, uh, Michael Phelps was, Phelps was told and like a lot of like other athletes were told, replay you jumping off like, you know, Michael Phelps, like a um, Olympic Olympian, mm -hmm. um, jumping off a, a swimming, um, a swimmer, um, jumping off the blocks, going in through. And he would play this idea of him being number one, of him holding his breath, of him besting his time. Mm. And then when it came time to do it, he was doing it because he was already doing it in his head. You know, mm. so I think sometimes when we're taught as, and like I said, I don't know who's on the call, but I know most of us are us, that we like, girl, like, whatever, that sounds too whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's, that's the part of us that's been beat out of us. That's been beat out of us to 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 be in touch with that that next level. Yeah. You know what I mean? We too be like, that's not practical. Who says practical is what's in what we yes. see right now? It's here. It's really here. So I'm telling you, like, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm gonna like well, I'm gonna end up this story. So like, yep. I am happily married. Like, I love my husband. Mm -hmm. But I remember I was it was 34 and I wasn't dating anyone. And I called my friend who was who was married. Right. happily so and I told her girl this budget needs to think is cute but budget needs to need the boo <laughs> I'm tired of coming home and ain't nobody right? right and she said well you're putting all this work and energy into your business are you putting that same energy into like finding a mate right and I said well what do you mean she said are you and she said something so powerful to, so to your point of visualization she said are you creating space for this person that you you claim that you want and I was like uh yeah she said mm-mm are you really, Tiffany? Is there space in your day for someone? Right. So I literally started to create blocks of time. Like, okay, it's Saturday. Instead of on my computer, if it was Saturday, I'd be out with Boo. I'm not going to work. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to get something to eat, but I'm going to create that space because this would be Boo time. You know what? If I had a Boo, I would sleep on the left side of the bed. I'm going to keep the right side for this Boo that's coming. Right? You know what? In my closet, he would have this one. I pushed my clothes to the side. I literally created physical, emotional, and mental space in my life for the person that I wanted to, cause I, you know, it sounds like Kara said, woo, 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 woo. But you know what? I was like, no, no, no. I need to create it internally so I can really feel it. So I did that and I was 33 and sure enough the next year, um, I had known my husband like years prior, we were really young, um, but we, I like, you know, and I thought he was cute, but like, you know, we're both in relationships at that time and we were young and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to settle down, I was single and mingling, okay. <laughs> um, and then 
he um he reached out to you no know, Facebook said people you might know because you know Facebook trying it all the time. I was like, oh, he's so cute. Let me see. Unattached, <laughs> cute. So I think I was like, it was like his birthday or something like that. The Facebook was reminding me. So I was like, you know, happy birthday. I know we haven't seen each other in a long time. Love to take you out to ice cream or whatever. So I made the first shot. Huh. When I tell you, Kara, we are so happily married. He is such a good man. He's not perfect. Right. Like I'm saying, like happily married, like we don't, you know, because just earlier today I was giving him the look like, you, girl, if he was power washing the house at nine o'clock at night, I was like, that's what we're doing. You know, so he's not perfect. But when I say happily married, I created space internally, mentally, um, um, emotionally for what I wanted. And as a result, I had that thing. And so I'm just sharing that, like, if you're interested in this class it's with Kara, five ways to finesse your Oh, um, no, um, five day slate is student loan challenge. It's deceptive in that it's about student loans so because we, because it's really about mindset shifting and you can take the tenets of shifting your mindset all across your life and make it better. And so, like I said, Kara usually has a 60 day course. It's about $700. She has, she, so if you're inside the literature Academy, um, uh, Kara has a, a course about mindset for us. It's, it's a, it like an hour course. It's a really great course. But this is a five-day step-by-step um, email, live instruction, homework. So this is a little different. It's a little more in-depth. It's She has truncated her, her 60-day course into five days for us. And instead of the $700 that her 60-day course is, it's $97. The link we have posted all in the comments, so please reshare it. But it's also in the description of this video. If you go to the video, you see the description describing this video. And the link is there. It's just for dream catchers. And when does it actually start? Because it's only a limited time. When does it start, Kara? August 3rd. August 3rd. So if you, so I wish I should have said that earlier. So this is not like a forever and ever and ever. It's live. So it right. starts August 3rd. Right. And then once it's done, it's done. So, but Kara's create, because like, you know, everybody who I try to bring on also has their own businesses and things. They do something special for us and then go back to their people. So I pull them away five days, you know, 10 days, and then I release them back into the wild. <laughs> So it starts on August 3rd. And if you're interested in not only learning how to slay your student loan, but also learning how to shift your mindset for an overall abundant life, there's nobody that I know better than Kara. And Kara, I just want to thank you. I know we, we stayed on longer than I thought, but because you're, you're just awesome. I just want to thank you for coming on and honestly helping to transform my life. I would not be here with some of the advice and some of the mindset shift that I've learned from you personally. So I'm just grateful for you, friend. Thank you. And um yeah, like yeah. So see I've been sharing my good people. Um <laughs> all right. So see y'all. Share this video. <laughs> it's gonna be recorded. Um and so like yeah we went way longer than I thought but it was just so good. Right. Um, is there anything you want to end with Kara? I just last thing and I promise it'll be short. It's just that sometimes our relationship with not having and being disappointed is so tied to our identity so in some ways that the idea of having more than we need and fighting for something beyond just what our basic necessities are is from sometimes difficult for us to conceptualize as like that is for us like joy and abundance and money and beyond student loans beyond like the regular you know sally may and Sam and uncle sam is beyond us but it is and so that's what i want to say so yeah that's what i want to say all right. Well, thank you, Kara. Yeah. Have a good night. Share this video. Sign up for her course. Okay. Um, yeah. And hopefully we'll have you back on, Kara, because I think more now more than ever, people need like mindset shifting. So just thank you for sharing your time with us tonight. Of course. Thank you. You're so welcome. And I hope you guys have a good night. All right. Love you, girl. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at my cheekbones. Pop it. I should have mentioned that. Cheekbones for days on here. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>